and go to my 1099G and say this was a state refund, state refund. And I say that this is gonna be state and local tax refund. And let's say I got whatever, $1,000 refunded. And I just plug that in. If I jump back on over, that might not populate here. It's not populating. Why? Because the software doesn't know if I got a benefit from it last year. It doesn't know if I got a benefit. This often confuses people because they say, well, if I got a 1099G and I entered it in the proper area on the tax return, it should pull over. Well, the software is saying, well, I don't know if it should pull over because I can't tell if you got a benefit from it in, uh, in, the, prior, in the prior year. Now, if you're using the same software from last year to the current year, then hopefully the software will be able to know whether or not you got a benefit and it'll help you out with that calculation. If you have a new client, then you can basically say, well, if it's an easy tax return, I can see that they didn't itemize last year. So I'm not gonna go through the problem of entering the data into the 2021 tax return and rolling over. I'm just gonna say, yeah, I entered that in and it, does, it didn't pull over. That makes sense because they didn't have a benefit last year anyway. So no, no problem. No problem. <laughs> However, if I look at the last year tax return and they did itemize, they have these itemized deductions that are greater than the standard deduction, I would suggest that instead of just starting that new client entering it into 2022 tax software, you might think about entering it into 2021, which is more costly maybe, because maybe you have to pay for a 2021 return in order to populate it, but it might be worthwhile to do and then rolling it over to 2022 so the software can then do some of these calculations automatically as you roll the information forward so i'm going to imagine let's imagine last year that they did itemize let's imagine for example let's mirror it this time what are the things that usually pull people over to itemizing we'll talk about this more later but they're going to be if i go to the itemized deduction if they own a home if they own a home then they might have interest on on the home home mortgage interest so let's add the home mortgage interest and we'll talk more about these later but let's just say it was significant like twenty thousand in home mortgage interest and let's say their taxes were let's say the the real estate taxes were let's say uh let's say six thousand now then they would also have state taxes which if you were populating if i was doing like a california return I would also be calculating the state tax at the same time and it would it would help me to pull out and determine that or it'll give me the the taxes that are being calculated for the for the sales tax using a table or i can populate the sales tax so now i'm going to say okay well they itemize they're itemizing possibly if i pull this on over to page one they're over the standard deduction so okay uh oh they're itemizing so that would be I would think well, then it's mu much more likely that that state refund would have to be included in income, which would look something like this. So now I've got the state tax refund included here and on schedule one. And if I pull that back on over to the 1040, and now I've got the 100,000 here, and then I've got the 1,000 pulling in from uh, the taxable income. And then we've got our itemized deductions. Now we're at the 73. 983 and so on so the the general and so notice i basically made an override forcing the 1000 to pull in on the software here again in practice i would think the best theory the best practice to do is if you have an easy tax return one in which they didn't have a schedule a last year then you could maybe just start your tax return in 2022 and just and just go forward if you have a more complex tax return and part of, and so for example if someone had a schedule a i would typically do the practice of putting that and mirroring the same data input for that new client in 2021 tax year to match what the data input was so i can then roll it over to 2022 allowing the software to help me with some of those worksheets to determine uh if they got a benefit from things like the state taxes and other kind of a rollover kind of components that might cost more to do that but that gets you off on the right foot i think from uh the first year uh going going forward so it might be i think that's worthwhile to do oftentimes for more complex tax returns because again you could imagine like if they itemized last year you might say well yeah they got a benefit from it because they put 
they they've they've got this taxes that they deducted here on this on the schedule a but remember if the taxes are high enough let's let's say let's imagine the state taxes are like uh, 12,000 let's say and then I pull this over now there's going to be a cap of 10,000 so now there's a cap so now there's a question of well yeah well now I got the, the amount that refunded may not be as may not have impacted the amount I got a benefit from because there's a cap of 10,000 on it or you can imagine a situation where I'm just barely getting over the itemized threshold, right? So if I'm if I could have gotten a standard deduction of uh, uh, in this case twelve thousand nine fifty, and then I just barely got over to itemizing because my itemized deductions, including the state taxes, happened to be thirteen thousand dollars. Well, then I didn't really get a benefit. You know, I only got a benefit of like fifty dollars added. So if my state tax refund or the state tax deduction was like a two thousand dollars or whatever i really only got a benefit of it of like fifty dollars right you can see where these problems come into play and how it can be a complicated worksheet to to un to actually drill down on how much benefits you got so what you want to have an idea is the general theory and then use the software and see that the software and double check deconstruct this what the software is doing if the software then calculates and says well only half of the half of the tax is being included in schedule one as long as you didn't override it then you can say okay does that make sense and deconstruct it why does that make sense well yeah because they hit the cap on the schedule a last year so that so that means that some of the some of the state taxes they didn't get a benefit from the deduction and, and whatnot that's the general idea of thought process that you might think through when you get that uh, form 1099g the the basic thing that you would tell the client would be I got a 1099g do I have to include it in income or they might ask you might do the tax return and they say hey look I got a 1099g and you didn't include it in income you should have because I got a 1099g and your response is well no uh you know you're only going to include it there if you got a benefit from it last year and if you didn't itemize you didn't get a benefit the only reason they gave you a 1099g is because they don't know if you got a benefit from it or not and that's the reason it wouldn't be there if it wasn't there or something like that, right?